Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of our Elite Chef series here at the Institute of Culinary Education. Uh, today I'm really delighted to have with you a true Elite Chef. We have Chef Arnaud Bignon with us today from Two Mission Star uh, Spondi in Athens. Uh, Chef Arnaud uh, grew up in Le Mans in France and trained in Paris under some of the best elite chefs in Paris, Alain Ducasse, uh, Gérard Poula and Eric Frechon. Um, chef Arnaud became the head chef of Bondi uh, back in 2005 um, and then moved to the greenhouse in London where he stayed for several years uh, claiming um, two Michelin stars and being named as one of the 100 best chefs in the world in both 2016 and in 2017. Chef then moved to Bondi in Athens uh, and returned to Benby head chef uh, with his first head chef role and is now the general director of um, in Athens. So chef, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you, thank you. Hi everyone. It's great to have you with us. Um, so chef, can you, I've just given a little bit, bit of a, a background, uh, you know, a brief introduction to your, um, uh, to your culinary um, uh, world, but can you just talk a little bit about what you do now and sort of the path that's led you to this place? Sorry, I'm not listening very well. Okay. Uh, can you just give a, a little bit of a background into what you do now at, at your role um, in Spondi? Yeah, so now in Spondi, I'm in charge of all the restaurants. So I am the director of the restaurant and I'm in charge as well of the menu. So I'm making all the creation for the menu for the restaurant. And as well, I'm in charge of all the consulting for the company. Because we have some consulting a little bit in the island, in the Alkidiki that is in the north of uh, Greece. Okay. And we have different like this consulting and I'm making the menu there and I'm making all the training for the staff. So I'm a little bit uh, everywhere. Fantastic. And what was it like returning to uh, Spondi after you you'd sort of uh, had your first head chef role in 2005 and then returning again? Did it feel like home? Yeah, you know, I love uh, this country, I love Greece, and uh, we know after six years in London, it's very, very difficult city, it's very heavy uh, city, and very, uh, you spend a lot of time there to work, morning, night, and to come back in Greece, yeah, it's something different, you know, you are working with another uh, philosophy, and uh, you are enjoying more your work. Right. Is it just, is, is that the, the culture, as well as the ingredients and the, and the food there? Yeah, in Greece, we have, we have many, many good products. We don't have so, so, so many, but the most difficult thing is to find a good supplier for the nice uh, product in Greece. But when you have these, uh, these people around you that can bring every, every day the best uh, product, the best fish, the best lamb, the best uh, whatever you are using, it's quite uh, very nice to uh, enjoy and to create many, many dishes. And is your, is your cuisine uh, ingredient-led now that you have all these fantastic pro uh, produce that you can use? Yeah, so me generally, I like to mix uh, many, many uh, products from a little bit all over the world. So that we will see tonight with the recipe that I will uh, cook for you. It's a mix of uh, Asia from uh, North Africa and some uh, product that we are finding in, uh, in Greece. Mm -hmm. So uh, me generally, I like to focus on the the acidity on the product, on the dishes. So I like to have all the time some acidity, natural acidity or acidity with vinegar. I use lemon, I use the tomato when they are even uh, not uh, ripe. So I like to play with that to make one dish that is not, uh, that you want all the time to go back to eat, to eat, because you have this acidity that's making all the time the peak like this, going up, going down, and it's more uh, exciting. So all the recipes are all the time with some uh, height like this of uh, acidity. Fantastic. And can you just talk a little bit about the dish you're going to be doing today for us? Yeah, so tonight, today I will cook a nice uh, lamb, so a milk fed lamb, so almost uh, eight uh, weeks. So it's very white. It's, uh, this meat, we all the time cook it uh, medium, because otherwise it's a bit chewy, because it's quite uh, fresh uh, meat. Yeah. So this we will cook with some aubergine black and purple, that will make one burn a puree of aubergine, and we'll make one aubergine that will just steam, press it, glaze, with some uh, sesame, so a bit uh, Asian style. We have one harissa sauce, it's coming from Morocco, with some uh, spicy inside, cumin, a little bit chili to be uh, spicy. And uh, we will glaze this aubergine with the one gastric, I would say, so base of sugar that we deglaze with some soya sauce, some vinegar, and some uh, white wine, and a little bit of uh, lemongrass. You see, it's a mix 
But this mix, you know, when you will eat the dish, you will find all this perfume all together. It's very nice harmony. It looks very complicated, but at the end, it's very, very, very simple. Right, right. So you've got, yeah, you've got a really good mix of um, uh, different influences there from Mediterranean to North African, Moroccan, and then some Asian as well with the soy and stuff like that. So it's a uh, yeah, I love it. Fantastic. Um, all right, chef. Do you want to do you want to get started, and we can we can talk while while we're while we're cooking as well. Yeah. yeah? Okay. So we we'll start first with the cooking that uh, we need to cook that in oven. So we have the black aubergine, yeah. and we have the red pepper. So I will uh, wrap the the red pepper one by one. I will cook them in the oven at uh, 200 degrees for 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And the same way we will cook. The aubergine, that I will just make some uh, small holes inside to remove all the humidity from the aubergine. And this aubergine will make a puree with that. But after cooking, we will burn the skin and we mix everything. So that aubergine, just some holes like this, just fast to remove uh, some humidity to have one uh, puree that will not be too, too uh, wet. Right. So we put just like this without fat, without salt, without anything. We're just seasoning the puree when we will mix it. Allowing them, allowing them to steam in the oven when they... So this will be in the oven at yep. 200 with the red peppers. So we go for 20 minutes. And we have this uh, purple aubergine that I will make some holes as well. And this we will steam. So we will steam. After 20 minutes, we'll remove it. We'll press it to have something flat and remove all the water from the aubergine. So I have this nice steam. Then we go for 20 minutes. So now what we do, we start the glaze for the aubergine. So we have 300 grams of sugar. We have two lemongrass. We have 250 grams of white wine. We have 60 grams of soya sauce. And we have 100 grams of uh, vinegar. And we have 8 grams of agar-agar. So what we do, we do one dry uh, caramel that we will deglaze with all the liquid and the lemongrass. We will cook that until the caramel will become liquid. And after we add the uh, agar-agar that we will cook again for two minutes. We will pass it and we we'll keep it in the fridge until cold. After blitz it. And after blitz it, we just uh, pass to the vacuum machine to remove the air from inside to have something more clear. So what I do, I cut the lemongrass. So chef, this is uh, like a fluid gel? Yeah, this is a typical uh, Japanese uh, style of uh, glaze. It's very nice. Me, I love it because it's very, very tasty. With the lemongrass, we have a nice acidity that makes the aubergine not so, so uh, flat. And with the soya sauce, the caramel is the base. Uh, it's just uh, like uh, we can make a normal uh, gastric. So now we have a little, little bit of time for that. So no, on the same time, we will start the... So I already made the long jus because we need one hour and a half to make the long jus. So it will be a little bit uh, too much time. So I will just refresh it with some uh, meat, some lamb uh, meat that I keep it. So I cut already a small pieces. So I will put just a little bit of olive oil. Greek olive oil, of course. Huh? Mm -hmm. We are using just uh, have so, so much Greek, uh, nice Greek oil. So I will refresh that. I will put just a little bit of time. I already make the jus so with some uh, lamb uh, three meats like this, a little bit of bones and meat, with some uh, shallot, garlic, and thyme. So I roast that slowly, slowly. I add some butter to have a nice coloration. After I remove all the fat, put some water until the, the top, and cook that for at least one hour. After we pass it, and we reduce it. So we obtain that. And now what I will do, I will just... Uh, to give more taste, just color again the meat, with a bit of thyme, but no more uh, garnish, not to be too strong. And I will add the liquid, the, the lamb, and then I just will add more, uh, to be stronger the taste.
So we need a little bit of butter. So we will see I'm French, but I'm not using too much butter. Huh? <laughs> you see the recipe without cream, without butter too much. So. Yeah. Do you find, Jeff, do you find that's becoming more, more common now to use less butter and cream and more? Uh, yeah, and you know, we are in Greece, and generally it's uh, six or seven months of the year, it's very, very hot. Yeah. So, you know, when the days are eating outside, it's, uh, you need to eat something that is very tasty, but light. Light, yeah. Very important, you know. The people that are coming uh, in Greece for holidays, so they want to, be, to look nice when they are on the beach. So uh -huh. we are taking care of them. <laughs> so at the same time, we take care of the sugar, so we make a dry caramel. Huh? So we start slowly, slowly. So that the blade is better to do that uh, at least uh, six hours before because time after we cook that with the agar agar we need to uh, keep it at least for two hours in the fridge until it's very hard and after just beat it and then pass after the vacuum machine to remove the air and have something more uh, shiny. And chef, you um, you worked under some of the the biggest names in 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 France. Uh, how was that working with uh, the likes of Alain Ducasse and, and Eric Fréchon? Well, it was very. Uh, it was a great great experience. It was very tough. Yeah. Very tough because it was a busy lunch and dinner. It was uh, all the time with a lot of pressure. Yeah. But it was very very nice experience. Yeah. Uh, because he's a great chef, and the great chef was uh, Jean-François Piège, that is uh, this one great chef, you know, you recognize the chef when they are great, when they are taking something in their hands, and with nothing, they are making something just amazing, you know. When he was uh, taking just a meat to cook a meat, it was uh, already, you were watching and you say, wow. So it was a great, great experience. Yeah. But I had the chance to have working with really a great chef, you know. I was working with uh, with Yannick Alino at Rouen, that is pretty much a star now in Paris. I was working with Jean-François Piège, that is pretty much a star, and because that is a pretty much a star all over the world. I was working with Eric Fréchon as well, so uh, I can say that I was uh, very lucky to work with uh, all these uh, great uh, chefs, and to learn so, so many things, and... Uh, open your mind so much because they are, you know, they are all the time thinking, they are just a machine, uh, they are thinking all the time, you know, you are speaking to them, they are thinking, it's, uh, so you are learning a lot from this kind of uh, chef. And then, uh, and being I'm from England, how was it, uh, how, how was your experience in London at the Greenhouse? It's such a, a famed uh, restaurant, the Greenhouse, and you had some great success there. It was a great experience because, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was lunch, dinner, it was busy all the time as well, and it was many, many restaurants, you know, the, the greenhouse uh, is in Medfair, and it's a very busy, busy place, you know. You are all around, I don't know, two, three, one Michelin star restaurant, so the guests, they are coming all the time to see what's happened there, 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 so they come in, they, so and it's the same for the staff, you know. It was very tough with the staff because the staff they are changing all the time. You have staff generally from all over the world. And right. so it was not quite difficult to stabilize the team because they want all the time to see something else. They are thinking that after six months they know already everything and they want to go to another restaurant. Yeah. So it's very tough because you are all the time looking for staff. Yeah. So you spend a lot of time to uh, to learn the staff and when they know they are leaving. So you are all the time uh, starting again from the beginning with the staff. Okay. Was, uh, 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 but uh, after London, it's an amazing place. You know, they have a uh, England great product. We are working on the scallops. Uh, they have 
در بی سیس کلاب سی پاس مینی مینی پروژه رابوستی نو لایک رابوستی ترافر با شوان سول دو می دو بی پیزا میزی سو یه پاس کن سی پاس در ایزی تو کریت دیشیز لندن بای So here we have the caramel that starts just to take color. So we'll wait to be completely uh, dark caramel, not to be too to sweet. We want a little bit of this uh, so the color of well. The larger starts to have nice coloration. So we color it a bit more soon. We will add some butter just to finish the coloration. Now we we'll already put just uh, one branch of time. So when the caramel will be ready, we take this with all the liquid and the lemon grass. So now we'll add just a bit of butter, just to finish the coloration of the bowl, to have something nice for the taste. Mm -hmm. For the caramel, it's important not to touch the sugar, you know. You just leave the caramel like this. And when the caramel will be glazed, the caramel after we we'll use the whisk inside to just to remove the pieces of sugar that we have still some inside. so so uh, complicated it's some uh, three four uh, things to do and after it's, uh, it's very nice dish because we are playing uh, playing on the color so we have the red we have the black the burn origin uh, puree inside we put a little bit of carbon color to be very black yeah so we have the lamb we have a it will be very uh, graphic uh, dish but very very tasty this is the most important it's, uh, First, when you have the dish, it's very nice uh, looking, but after when you eat, it's a uh, wow. You know, it's a uh, yeah, yeah. full, full taste. So the sugar is almost ready, as you can see. We just cook a little bit more for one minute. So the caramel soon will be ready. You see, it's almost no pieces inside. So I will take this first with the vinegar and the lemon grass, and after I will add the the wine and the soya sauce. So just be careful, huh? So now I will reduce a little bit the fire just to make all the sugar because now the sugar becomes hard. So we just cook slowly, slowly until the sugar becomes uh, liquid. And when it becomes liquid, we will add the uh, agar agar inside that we put again for two minutes. Okay. So now the long jus, you see, we have nice uh, coloration. So that I will remove all the fat. So we do not have something pepper or remove excellent of fat. And I will put back inside the bones. And I add my base of a long jus that I was making already. So Do you use a do you use a lamb stock for this, or do you use a veal, or 
No, no, only lamb. Only lamb. Uh, the base is uh, just with the lamb and trimming uh, bones. Okay. Little bit of garnish and uh, nothing else inside. I'm not using any wine, anything uh, inside. I want the full, full taste of uh, the lamb. So I don't mix anything all the time. If I'm using veal, I will make uh, veal jus. If I'm using uh, lamb, I will make lamb jus. So, now we mix a little bit and we start the caramel, so we put a little bit higher now. Okay. So with the lemongrass, it's, uh, you know, it gives uh, some bad, a little bit of uh, acidity, but uh, just uh, imagine that you are putting just the skin of the lemon inside it. Yeah. Yeah, man, a good, nice perfume and the aubergine is working very well. So we take a little bit of time huh, just to uh, the caramel to become liquid again, but we need to whisk that a little bit to remove all the pieces because otherwise uh, the gel will not be hard enough if you want to keep all the sugar. It's very important as well to put that at least for 5-6 minutes because the lemongrass has time to infuse inside. Okay, so... And we bring that. So here we will pass the glaze just after we will add the, the, the agar agar inside. And after we put down that. And after we need just to bleed that and just remove the air with the sewing machine. Here we are, so I add 8 grams of agar agar. And now we boil that for 2 minutes. And you need, you need to heat the uh, egg agar for to activate it. Chef, you need to heat the uh, the agar to activate it to make sure it it, it sets. Yes, yeah, exactly. The agar will set, and we have a gel after. Mm -hmm. Just to, you know, we want something with a texture just to put on the top of the aubergine, and that we stay on the aubergine. Chef, what do you um with the with the milk fed lamb? Um, what what are you looking for in in flavor contrast there to to your normal? Sorry, I wasn't listening. Sorry. What are you looking for within the flavor of the milk fed lamb being very very young? Okay, me generally I love to uh, work uh, the aubergine with the lamb because I think it's the best uh, it's the best uh, vegetable and combination that you can have with the lamb. And with the glaze, you know, we give a little bit of sweetness with this uh, glaze and the acidity as well. And the harissa will give the power on the sauce. So imagine that you have like a mustard and uh, we will season just the lamb with the mustard. Okay, so the glaze, we boil it for two minutes. Now I pass it to a sieve.
And I will put that in the fridge until cold. So because we don't have uh, two hours to wait, <laughs> so I was making already that. Yeah. So here we have the glaze. So you see we have nice, uh, nice texture. And that after it will stay very well on the aubergine. When we warm it, it will be very nice. So when it so when it comes out of the uh, out of the refrigerator, it's set like a jelly. It's set, yeah. So we need to blitz it with the thermomix or uh, whatever you have. Yep. And to pass it through a sieve, and after just to remove the, the air inside. Right. So here we are. So now. The lamp jus, I will cook a little again to reduce, but uh, for five, six minutes. Now we press the lamp. Yeah. So it's the best and the saddle. Uh -huh. So what I will do, I want to keep just the log. Oh. So I will check the aubergine in the steam. Okay, so it's 20 minutes, the aubergine is ready. So, you see we have this aubergine, it's still a little bit of a resistance like this, but you see it's nice because when you press with your finger, it's going in. So now what we do, we press that, we keep in the fridge for two hours to remove all the liquid and to be flat. And after, when we remove from the fridge, we obtain that. So we have, you see, something flat. And, uh, yeah. So from that, after, we we'll just cut some uh, slices of uh, two centimeters thickness. Yeah. And we will just color up and down with some olive oil. And we will add the glaze, some uh, toasted uh, sesame, and we we'll just warm it slowly in the oven. So this will be the garnish that we will add to the lamb after cooking. So that I will show you. Fantastic. So I come back to the lamb. So what I do, I remove all the bones mm -hmm. to keep just the loin. And I will not keep at all the skin. Because generally, you know, the skin is, uh, if they are young lambs, so it's a bit chewy. So it's better to remove everything. So we have this part, so I remove the sinew, the lamb. Just take care of the bones. And we obtain this part. Mm -hmm. So that is so it's around 150 grams. So we need uh, 120 grams for the for the dish. So we just remove a small part of that and then uh, we will cook it. Right. We pan fry it after just a normal way, you know, just a bit of olive oil, a bit of butter, a bit of garlic and thyme, just to go for the coloration for the taste. So here we are. So I will just reduce a little bit more the lamb jus. But already you see we have a nice, uh, nice color. Now we have a... So I check the oven to see how it's going with the aubergine and the red pepper. So the aubergine, they are cooked. So now what I will do, I will torch them. Yeah. Just to burn uh, the skin for the taste. So to have a 
a stronger taste of uh, aubergine. If you have a charcoal or a barbecue, it's, uh, you can cook them directly on the barbecue, but yeah, in the kitchen is a bit difficult. You know, with the lockdown, we are not in so we are at home. So. Yeah. It's not so, so easy, but with the torch like this, you know, we give it a color and taste. You know, what we want is uh, this uh, burn uh, taste that you you know, because the harissa will be quite uh, strong, so we need something to combine that. So the aubergine like this, when it's burned, it's very nice uh, mixing with the harissa. So in, in the restaurant, do you do this over charcoal or something? Yeah, we we'll use the charcoal for, uh, for the aubergine when we make uh, this uh, puree. Uh. Generally, yeah, we are using, we are coloring the foie gras. I like to finish the foie gras as well when we are making a pan fried foie gras just to finish like this on the grill with some uh, pine, uh, pine needle to have a nice uh, taste and smell. So you're not adding, you haven't added any salt yet, chef, in, in either of the um, the aubergine. You haven't added salt to that, just. No, not yet. No, I will just add the salt when I will blitz them with the from the puree. Right. But generally, me, I'm not using too much uh, pepper on the vegetables, on the fish. I don't like that. For me, it's too strong. Right. So I will just put uh, salt uh, in the puree. I will use the pepper just to seasoning the meat, a little bit on the jus, and that's it. So here we are. So we remove the aubergine, we we'll mix them. We use a small mixer because it's not a big, big amount. Mm -hmm. So we put everything inside. Nice and hot, chef, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Nice and hot. Yeah, that's <laughs> good. And what is the uh, what is the flavor, the difference in flavor between the uh, the black eggplant or the black aubergine and um, the other one that you steamed? Sorry, I was not listening. Uh, what what is the the flavor difference between the uh, the two egg the two aubergine that you used? Uh, two aubergine on the same dish. Yeah, the difference in flavor. Uh, in flavor. So you will have this one that will be more, uh, you know, with the burn, it will be more uh, complex. And you will have the other aubergine that it will be just thin and pat fried. And the glaze will be a little bit more sweet okay. and more uh, texture as well, because this will be uh, just a puree. So the steam aubergine will be the texture of the, of the dish. <laughs> So we add the salt. And a bit of uh, carbon color. So we want something very, very black. Huh? So yeah. it's very important for the dish. So you see the carbon is very important. So 
So it's very nice because with the small kids, uh, very complex things. So here we have the black puree, so that will pass through, uh, through uh, chinois, thin chinois to be very thin, and this will keep in a squeezy bottle. So here we have, we have the squeezy bottle for the garnish for the sauce. So now we are making the, the red pepper so they will be cooked uh, soon. Just to make the harissa, after we have the lamb to cook, and then we will uh, finish the, the garnish. So, the lamb jus, I just top it, so you see it's nice texture, so I will pass it. not to have any uh, pieces inside, to be very clear. So we have the sauce ready, so we keep on the side. So, let's check the red pepper, they are ready, so we need them. So now what we do, we keep them like this a little bit for uh, 5 to 6, 7 minutes outside, you know, for the humidity just to finish and be easier to remove the skin. After we mix them, we'll add uh, then the cumin, we'll add the vinegar, some uh, chili, and some miso paste, the clear one inside. Okay, great. So that will make uh, something like it will really give the power to, uh, to the dish. Fantastic. So now I will start the cooking of the lamb and the aubergine. So aubergine. I will cut some pieces like this. So I will make three. So these pieces, we will color them mm -hmm. with a little bit of olive oil, up and down, not on the skin size, but on the flesh. Seasoning the lamb, so salt and pepper. So, like this. so we start first with the aubergine. We need to be very, very uh, hot to color uh, fast the aubergine. The aubergine is cooked already, so we want just to have the stronger uh, taste on the side. So, and after we'll have just uh, this glaze on the top, the toasted uh, sesame. We we'll put them in the oven a little bit just for two, three minutes to be uh, just warm. And after, when the meat uh, will be cooked, we'll cut the meat with the aubergine. I want something, you know, like a rectangular. It will be uh, one slice of aubergine, one slice of lamb, one slice of aubergine, one slice of lamb. So like this, when the guests they will cut, they will have uh, all together. They will eat the meat, the garnish together. And they will just take the lamb aubergine and together for the seasoning. 
So it would be a little bit like writing a beef with the mustard, you know, you are taking the mustard on the side, yeah, yeah. the power of the dish. So we start. And chef, is this a is this a signature dish of yours? Yes, this uh, one dish that I was uh, creating when I was uh, in London. Oh yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, I can say that I was cooking a lot of the dishes because it was uh, you know the English people they love lamb generally. Yeah. So it's one uh, one of the best uh, seller that we had. Uh, yeah. And it's a uh, fantastic quality over there. Uh, yeah. um, it's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, I was working with amazing uh, Welsh uh, lamb yeah. from uh, Rogue Estate. Yep. That was, uh, was uh, unbelievable, you know, it was the quality was all the time the same. Yeah. Whatever, week after week, day after day, it was all the time the same uh, quality. Yeah. Yeah, very uh, very famous quality from the, 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 yeah. the Rogue Estate. Yeah, it's very really good. So I just put it a bit of salt. You see, you have some part that you need uh, times to do that. The aubergine, for example, uh, the skin one, you need at least two hours in the fridge to be pressed and to be flat to remove all the liquid. It's the same for the glaze with the agar agar, you need two hours to set in the fridge before right. to blitz it. The l'enjeu, it takes all the time, a little bit of time as well, so. The work uh, for the mise en place, for the service is quite easy. You know, just the, just need to color, to cook the meat, to color the aubergine. And, and um, chef at Spondy, does a lot of your menu revolve around um, vegetables and, and and fish rather than than meat? Yeah, so me generally, I love more uh, shellfish, fish. Yeah. But uh, we have a chance, you know, to have a lot of uh, nice uh, selfish yeah. and uh, nice uh, fish in, uh, in Greece. So the meat is a bit more difficult in Greece because you have very nice uh, milk red lamb. Yeah. You have some pork and uh, that's it. A right. little bit of beef, but not too much. Not uh, duck or this kind uh, we don't have at all. So the meat is quite... Uh, it's quite all the time the same uh, product. It's very difficult to find uh, something. You cannot find you cannot find the uh, meat that you have, uh, and this kind of thing. Sweet bread, so you get that. Right. So it's, you are all the time with the same uh, meat. The fish is easier because you right. have all the type of fish. You have the lobster, you have the roasting, you have uh, many, many uh, things. So we're seasoning this side as well. Now we remove them from the absorbing pepper, just to remove the pot. Okay, on the same pan, we start the lamb. On the skin side. And you and you said you always want to take the uh, the milk fed lamb to a nice medium, nice pink. So now for the aubergine, so we have blue aubergine. So we have the glaze, so I will put a little bit of glaze on the top. Like this. And spread some uh, toasted uh, sesame.
and we keep on the side and when we be ready with the long we just pass we just pass again two minutes in the oven just to finish the cooking and to uh, warm it and after we will finish the dish so the lamb we color the lamb so we cook medium yeah it's quite uh, fresh uh, meat, you know, so if you cook less, it would be a little bit uh, chewy, so it's also interesting. Yeah. So I'll be back with the red pepper. They are well cooked. So what we do, remove the, the skin yeah. and the seeds. So when you leave them like this and the pepper after cooking, after the oven, it's quite easy to remove the skin. So we take care not to color too much huh, because it's a uh, it's a uh, fresh made, it's something to make, so we need to uh, to put it on that so we just color uh, gold, the coloration, but no more than that. So after I remove the skin and the seeds, I put them a little bit on the seed, just to remove the water not to be too, uh, too liquid. So we have done the same with the other one. We will blitz. We we'll add the cumin, we we'll add the chili, we we'll add the vinegar and the miso paste. Then after we will uh, pass that through uh, chinois, and we will keep in a squeezy bottle. This will not warm. We just uh, want the aubergine puree. Right. So now for the lamb, uh, we'll add one uh, clove of garlic and the thyme. And a little bit of butter. So now we we'll finish the cooking and we will uh, just uh, arrange the meat like this. So we need at least, uh, let's say, to leave that to drain uh, well for 10 to 15 minutes to remove all, uh, all the liquid. Right. 
So after we bridge that, so as I say, with the cumin, yeah. vinegar, and miso, chili, and we will obtain the base that are already put in a squeezy bottle. So this would keep uh, cold. Okay. Now finish the cooking of the lamb. So we change the cooking. So now we are okay. I will just put a bit of fresh pepper on the meat. Just left a bit of salt. And I will eat the meat. So I will keep like this the meat for six minutes. Yeah. Just to uh, we will pose the meat, and after we will finish uh, the dishes, so we will go straight to the painting. Okay, great. So for the plating, we need uh, one plate, but it's very important to have the rim uh, straight or like this, because you will see when we make the the garnish around, you need something, you know, that you can turn the plate all around. So we don't want a flat, flat plate, but uh, with the ring like this. Okay. So now uh, we pass the aubergine in oven for two minutes. So I will put uh, just a little bit of uh, sea salt uh, flakes on the meat when we uh, cut the meat. So it's ready. I was not testing, but I will check now if I need to add a bit of salt or uh, pepper. So just a bit of pepper. And salt. So we go straight to the plating. So for the garnish, so we start with the one bigger drop of uh, black aubergine puree. Mm -hmm. So like this. Make it a little bit flat. I add uh, one nice drop of uh, harissa, like this. And with one uh, paper that I will uh, close like this, I will turn all around. So you get a very fine line doing it like this. Yeah, it's very important because like this, you know, you will have, well, like this, you have, you see the puree that uh, the guest will take to it like this. And on the same time, we have a, a limit like this. When we pour the sauce in the middle, the sauce will just stay inside, you know. Right. So even when uh, we serve the dish to the guest, we will have something all the time very nice, very clean, and the sauce will not uh, run on the on the plate. Right, right. So I remove the aubergine. So like this. So I will cut the lamb, so I cut the, the edge. So now what is important is to have the size of the aubergine and the lamb. So we trim just a little bit. So like this. 
So I will cut just a little bit the edge to have something uh, flat. And I cut in the middle. Like this. So now I will come to put the land in the middle and add one aubergine. So I will just cut a little bit the edge of the aubergine. Like this. So I will just add a little bit of sea salt flex on the meat, a little bit of pepper, and I will come to put the meat on the side. And now, what we need to do is just to add the jus in the middle. So, you can add just with a jug or the waiter can add just in, uh, in front of the guest. So, we will just add with a spoon like this. And you keep that very clean, very clean, no butter or anything? Yeah, exactly. Uh, So that's it. Beautiful. So I don't know if you can see very well the dish. Yes. yes. Fantastic. So you see something very graphic, but yeah. it's uh, it's full full of taste. Full right. full of taste. Right. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Jeff. Um, I love mm -hmm. the way that I love the way that you pulled in so many different um, ingredients from from uh, different places of the world with the lemongrass mm -hmm. and, for example, the the miso that you put in with the harissa. Uh, really combining um, lots of different cuisines there to to give maximum flavor. Um, I wish I could eat it now. Uh, it's, hey, it it sounds and looks fantastic. That's <laughs> <laughs> no, awesome. Me, uh, Jerry, you know, I'm reading a lot. Eh? I'm all the time on the on the internet to reading about spices, about product, all that. So you know, when you are finding things, after you find some connection between all of them. Yeah. So it's very interesting after to connect them together like this and to create uh, something. Right. I mean, I, I think uh, when something that, that struck me was um, you take the harissa, it's, uh, you know, Moroccan, North African, and then you've got the, the miso in there, which gives you like umami, and uh, uh, you know that's very very common now for, for chefs to bring in, um, in particular Japanese but Asian um, cuisine, and bring that in to to develop flavor, uh, and I can see yeah. that as well. Beautiful. Um, guys, if, if anyone has any questions, um, who's watching, please just uh, type in the questions. And I, can get, I can get it to, uh, to show I'm not listening to you very well. Okay. So I'm just saying if anyone has any questions, um, they can ask me and I'll, I will ask you. Um, but it's fantastic. And what sort of, um, uh, at, at, the, at the restaurant in, in Spondi, um, you mentioned lots of seafood, um, very uh, vegetable focused. Um, and you said you've also mentioned that it's ingredient led. Um, when chefs come to you, what do they? What do they? Um, what's going to be the big impact that they they learn from you as a chef working at Spondi? Hey, I think the biggest is to uh, understand the product that you are working. With. Right. Because you know the most difficult when we are making this work is to find the best product because without good product you cannot cook. Right. You know, if you have a bad lamb or Bad quality of lamb, it's uh, you cannot make nice recipe. Even if you have the best combination or that, the recipe will be nothing. So for me, the most important, you know, is all the time to source the best uh, product. And I can say that this takes a lot of a lot of time, a lot of time to find a good uh, supplier for each uh, product, for one lemon, for one lamb, for one aubergine. This is the most uh, important. This is the base. You know, without this uh, base, you cannot cook uh, something uh, nice. Right. Right. So you can have the best recipe, you can see the best recipe all over the world and try to do it, but if you don't have the right product, it's nothing. Right, right. And that, that's, that's very common with um, sort of more modernist um, cuisine, right? You can take those techniques, but unless you have good quality ingredients, yeah. it doesn't work. <laughs> exactly. I think 
I think this is the base of uh, some countries like uh, France that they have a nice product, like Italy, yeah. you know. There are many countries like this when they have a great product and uh, it's uh, easier to, uh, to cook because, uh, you know, it's more easier, easier to find the supplier for the veal, for this vegetable, that. And uh, so you have less. Uh, some other countries, you have nice product, but you need to fight to find them, you know. Right. So it's more, uh, it's more tough the work for that. Right, right. Fantastic. Um, so let me just check if there's any questions. Any, any more questions? No, no more questions. All right, um, Chef, thank you so much. Um, thank you for joining us. It's been fantastic. Um, I, I just want to say if any students are, are watching that I, I love it's memorizing, watching you watching you work as well. So so calm, organized, clean and tidy. And, and, and um, it's, it's fantastic. And I, I just wish I could try the food. So hopefully one day I, I can get out to see you. That would be hey, fantastic. Yeah, if you have some holidays to take, come in Greece, yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Jeff, thank you so much. Thank you for joining. Thank you very much. And thank you for sharing um, your food and your uh, philosophy with us. Thank you as much. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.